Hey traders, Charlie Man, Dan of the Chart Guys, checking in on the market. So appreciate those of you that tuned in to the live stream we had this morning where we saw the bears take over. We saw all major sectors dropping at the low of the day at the same time. That was enough to say, I'm not looking long today. The bears have control and we've seen really nice follow through since the notable shift, which for me was on Thursday. And fortunately, plus 50% views. People always come out for the fear, but nice to see that we were all on the same page. Well, maybe not, but... On Thursday, we saw the weakness, and that led to shifting the IRA to a bear lean, shorting Netflix for a swing position. And at this point, I've exited half of Netflix with hourly RSI in the low 20s, and I will reload next hourly bounce. So anything under 343.83 will be an hourly lower high next bounce. Netflix keeping an eye out for this gap fill down at 324.89. And weekly is approaching EMA 12 support. So the big question is going to be, is this weekly consolidation healthy or not? And we are going to measure our retracement to help us answer that question. And the S&P 500 is closing in on 50% retracement, which as we know, if we drop 50% or lower, that then increases probabilities that we can set a weekly lower high next time we bounce. So I am gonna be watching, unless we see more days like today, I am gonna be watching for a weekly higher low compared to where we came from. But again, I am open to the potential of monthly consolidation. And then we're gonna be talking about keeping an eye out for a potential monthly inverse head and shoulders pattern, which I've mentioned a couple times, but we're not gonna focus on that until this monthly candle closes. And then if we break it and monthly can consolidation is underway, then we'll worry about it. But for now, I'm keeping it really simple. Bears have absolute complete control as long as we are in an hourly downtrend. And today, the five minute EMA 12 resistance, look how long it was a guide on the morning. Once we hit a new low of the day, it just kept the bears in complete control for hours. And then it was just the 15 minute EMA 12 rejecting the bounces. So again, just sticking with the rule, if all major sectors, QQQ, XLF, XLV, hit the low of the day at the same time, I'm not looking long that day. And that's just a general rule. Sometimes I take a little bottom fish as I did today. I'll do a trade review at the end of this video with AI. But other than that, it was all bear trades, mostly AI. I was just trading AI a lot today. NASDAQ following through as well. The bears get an A today because on the, the pre-market live stream, you know, I laid out, these are all the things that I need to see for the bears. All major sectors hitting the low of the day together. XLF breaking the double bottom at 3607. QQQ breaking 297.25 daily support. The VIX was showing us strength for the first time in a while. There was one more. Oh, Apple. Apple breaking daily support of 149.22. Our lead bull general from the end of last week, or that was Wednesday, lead bull general shifting to joining team bears. Great sign for the bears. It's an A for the bears. The only reason it's not an A plus is we don't have high bear volume. It is below the 20 day average volume. Not a huge deal. It's just not ideal. SPY was you know, in line with the 20 day average. What the bears would love to see would be these kinds of days where the volume is well over the 20 day average. So we'll keep an eye out for that, but still an A for the bears. Hourly downtrends are our guides. The NASDAQ weekly consolidation at this point has a lot of space still above EMA 12. And we're only at 3A2 retracement, just getting there. So we can say the NASDAQ is still stronger than the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is leading the way down and we'll be keeping an eye on that. And again, I'm just keeping it simple, just hourly downtrend. I'm not, you know, I am expecting a weekly higher low, but I'm not going to be buying into weakness. I have to see a level established where I can then say that's our weekly higher low or I'm wrong and play off of that level because the worst thing I should say the last thing that a bull wants to do is be scaling in, you know, one fill, two fill magnet. One fill, two fill, but next thing you know, this happens and we drop down to new fear lows. Again, I'm open to anything in this market environment and just taking it one day at a time. And so before Thursday, bulls are just fine. You know, I was saying that time and time again, Thursday, things shifted. I have to be able to pivot with the new information that I'm getting. The dollar daily higher low is set at 103.76. Trying to head back to the recent high to keep this daily uptrend going. 
SMH, bear break on the daily, following through into weekly consolidation. Looks a lot like SPY and QQQ. We're heading towards EMA 12. And again, back burners are off the table at this point. You know, first hourly oversold conditions. It's not first hourly oversold anymore. QQQ hit hourly oversold on Friday, hourly oversold today. So back burners have been used up for the most part. NVDA has earnings tomorrow. Bear break of daily support. And again, it's just going to see clear further weekly consolidation on a bear reaction to earnings or a quick bull flag if it's a bull reaction to earnings. Tesla. Tesla's potentially a laggard bear to be keeping an eye on. And Lori was pointing out this head and shoulders on the four hour. And we were testing neckline support into the end of the day, 196.74. And we did hold that level at least initially. But again, laggard bear possible because it is still so strong on the daily uptrend and daily EMA 12. But again, watching for weekly consolidation here as well. So I'm going to be scouting hourly lower highs tomorrow. If we open higher with a bounce overnight, scouting hourly lower highs. If we gap down, I may be interested in a bounce, but only temporarily to then be scouting hourly lower highs after a bounce. I have no idea what direction I'm going to be looking on the morning. It depends on where we open. But if we open flat, I'm going to wait for a bounce. I'm going to miss it, not care about it. Again, unless there's a bottom fish that's very low risk, I'm not going to play counter trend because this is finally the bears proving themselves. I've been waiting for the bears to prove themselves for a month and they're finally doing it. So I'm not going to quickly just instantly turn right around and try and play the other direction. Healthcare sector, still weak. We did hold the low Friday with a double bottom, but it is obviously still unable to do much for the bulls. And so again, just the fact that all major sectors hit the low of the day together at the same time today, that was such a notable point for me to just give me clarity. Okay, this is what I'm doing on the day now, now that we finally have this signal that we've been watching for for the last couple of weeks. Financial sector, double top and rolled over. 34.56 is weekly support from here. Again, watching for the potential that this is a bit of a rising wedge as the weekly started to see bull breaks lack follow through. And I actually would already have that. That's how I would have drawn it. So financial sector showing some weakness. And again, it's money leaving the market today, not rotation, which is important. IWM downtrend confirmed lower high and lower low. Weekly consolidation continues inside bar, inside bar, bear break. Looking for a higher low compared to 170.34. But no sign of it. Biotech sector, bear flag confirming. The bulls did everything they could to try and negate the bear flag on Friday. Stair step, hourly move up, stair step, collapse. We never changed the hourly uptrend. I would have expected an hourly higher low to form today. But as soon as all major sectors hit the low of the day together, I no longer have any interest looking for an hourly higher low. So tons of space for an hourly lower high next bounce in the biotech sector. And again, this monthly is looking like we went from a daily tightening range to a two week tightening range and now into a monthly tightening range. The key support is 74.97. But easily the lead bear sector on my screen today. AI, so daily higher low set. We had bullish news this morning pre-market and a higher open and a strong start. Your red flag here is as soon as you see a new low of the day, if you start the day and you shoot straight up 6% and you give it all back, big red flag. We know uptrends are higher lows and higher highs. So if you give back that entire move, it then again, same thing, no interest looking long once you give that up. You know, you can try for a five minute higher low versus the low of the day, but as soon as we hit that new low, no longer looking long. So AI is going to have a ton of space. Well, actually, no, we did see an hourly bear flag today. So 22.23 is our new hourly lower high resistance level. And again, still liking the volatility in both directions. The crypto names had a big red day. They had a lot of volatility in both directions. So again, I'm just sticking with Riot and, and AI for my day trading until I shift to something else, which may be a natural gas bounce eventually, but not quite yet. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Gold and silver trying to confirm or trying to shape up a 12-hour trend change. Gold has been rejecting from 12-hour EMA 12 for a week. So trying for the higher low, have to confirm the uptrend. Silver, a little bit stronger on its bounce. 
We'll have to confirm a daily trend change for things to shift here. And I am in a SLV short from way back when, sometime around there. And I mentioned if my position were bigger, I would be exiting half that position on Thursday when we hit daily oversold conditions. But at this point, I might give the bears a chance to confirm a weekly downtrend. Again, the fact that gold has not started monthly consolidation yet, that's what I'm looking for before I look to cover my silver short. Oil onto the CLJ futures contract for April. So oil is a daily inside bar. I like the two-day time frame for an equilibrium. High, low, lower, high. Bulls must hold 72.64 for a higher low to try and form. The energy sector is ready to roll over for the bears here. If oil sees any kind of weakness, again, this is rising wedgy as well. I would have had it like that. So watching for monthly consolidation, it's pretty much a monthly bull flag failing on XLE at this point. And natural gas, again, still free fall. Weekly stair step, keep it simple. Don't have to nail the bottom. Four, four hour downtrend, EMA 12, if that remains the case, bulls are not proving a thing. If daily EMA 12 is resistance, the bulls are not proving a thing. We are not in any RSI extremes. Yes, we are very oversold as far as the prolonged nature of this move, but this sideways bounce cooled everything off and allowed for another leg down. There will come a point in time where natural gas bounces probably 50% off this low, but it's not yet. And again, people have been trying for week after week after week after week. If you're going to try to enter into weakness, give yourself one attempt. And then once you're done, that's it. You used up your attempt. Because the last thing you want to do, which is what some people are doing, is either scaling in and now they're bag holding, or just beating your head against the wall trying to go long again and again and again when you're going counter every single trend on every single time frame. All right, AI trade review. Hope you had a good day. Don't forget to do good things. And we will see you tomorrow. Doing a quick trade review on AI and just want to show the inner workings of my brain because I was heading into today after the morning full bear control. I said to myself, I have no interest going long today. I'm just looking short and I'm looking for lower highs to make those short entries. And I changed that and I went long and I'll tell you why. So AI was standing out as a very clear lead bear the whole way down, just weaker than the NASDAQ, dropping harder and harder the whole way down. So from there, I was zoomed in and I was watching the low of the day and I was comparing it to QQQ. So at 11.08, we hit the low of the day on AI. And that level at 11.08 was right here on QQQ. So QQQ hit a new low of the day right after 11.08. It hit a new low of the day at 11.18 and it hit a new low of the day at 11.30. AI hit the low of the day at 11.08, held it at 11.18, and then held it at 11.30. As soon as I see that double bottom, I am now interested going long. And the reason I'm interested going long is our lead bear. Why am I choosing to play this bounce from the lead bear name? And the reason is because it started to show me a shift from relative weakness to relative strength. So let's see what time I entered. 11.32. So as soon as I saw that level hold again, I'm in. So going long, going to go with a low risk bottom fish, my stops at 21.59. So I ended up getting a fill in the right around 21.69. And so my stop is risking 10 cents. So again, if I'm gonna be wrong, I've got bear positions, bear swing positions. If I'm gonna be wrong, I'm gonna stop out with a 10 cent loss and my bearish positions will continue to be green on the day and it will be a very insignificant loss. And then from there we get bounce follow through off the double bottom. One other factor was at the point of my entry, Apple has a very clear daily support level. And again, you know the importance of Apple, bigger picture, it held the daily support level. That was coming into play at that point in time. So here's 1130 and I say, all right, well, if Apple bulls defend their daily support, QQQ is gonna get a bounce going here. AI is showing me relative strength comparative to QQQ for the last, oh, at this point, it's almost 20 minutes of trading. 
And so I just really liked the risk reward here because the risk was so small. And so ended up selling a third of the AI position in the 2180s, a third at 21.99. And now I have a third of the position with a stop under the low of the day with zero risk. I cannot lose on this trade and I'm targeting 15 minute EMA 12 and may have just missed my sell there, but let's see if we get maybe one more two minute higher low. If we see one more leg up here, I'm gonna exit the third, the last third of the position. And then at that point, I'll be scouting 15 minute lower highs for a potential bearish entry, but patient. So picking up adventure time, back five years ago when I was in Costa Rica, it's Friday, so we've got a sour brown from New Belgian Brewery in town. So at nighttime in Costa Rica, all the creatures would come out. And from the last video, you could see that the spot we were staying in was very exposed to the elements. So the bugs and the critters were always coming inside. And it was not uncommon to have a scorpion in the bedroom or a crab in the kitchen. And the bugs at night would come and be attracted to any lights we had on. So the geckos would all hang out around the lights and they would just feast on all the flies and the bugs that would land near the lights. So that was fun to just watch every night. Some more different little iguana guys. Dan in the beach. Cowboy wondering what's going on. Baloo. Very comfortable with her new guardians. And just more incredible beach sunset. There was a moment where we were floating in the water and the sun was looking like that. And I said, if life is a trip, I'm peaking right now. And that's pretty much how I felt in terms of just perfection, alignment of everything. And someone posted on the other video, you know, the fact that I made money while I was at this place and came back with more was likely a, a direct result to being so in line and so in tune with everything that was going on in terms of being in the zone. That was it. And being able to get yourself to that place, things just seem to work out. Banana trees were all around. And again, we would just get fruit right from the yard. I mean, you, you had unlimited mangoes coming out of that yard. This was a neighbor's puppy. And this little dude just looked like he was stoned every single picture that you can take of him. But he was a cute little dude and it was fun to watch him interact with Baloo. It was pretty much a bigger version and kind of gets shown the ropes roughed around a little bit, but that's what it's like on the street. So for story time here at the end, I've told this story before, but if there's, if there's a resume of my life or a life resume and what I'm good at, what I would list, it would be technical analysis, farming, rock hopping, and breaking up dog fights would be, and ping pong, ping pong's up there. But breaking up dog fights is something I've done a lot. When I was on the farm in Maine, we had two female dogs that were not spayed. And so they, they did not accept, I mean, most times with animals, they accept their pecking order instantly. It gets determined very quickly and that's that. But when there's two animals that do not accept it, there is constant posturing and battle for that top spot. And we had this dog who was a, we had two Australian shepherds and one of them would just herd the other one and just walk straight behind it and literally be right on its back legs wherever we went. And every now and again, the one who was getting followed would just get fed up and say, nope, we're, this is going down right now. And they would go at it and draw blood. And, you know, there were times where I would have each of them in a headlock and they would still get out and go after each other. And it never got to the point where they would bite us. So I was never, you know, scared of that, but they were intense. So in this instance, we were in the water one evening, just like this. And Baloo and Cowboy were out and we didn't have her collar on, which was not good. But Baloo and Cowboy were on the ocean or on the, the beach by the ocean. They didn't really like coming in. So they would hang out and wait for us to come out. And these four big dogs that looked like they just came off a Siberian mountain came out of the woods and they were fine. They were just walking along and they walked over and we left the water to go say what's up to them. They looked like some really cool dogs. I don't know what breeds they were. They were giant and fluffy and probably very hot in Costa Rica, but there were no red flags. I have a, 
a very good sense of reading animal body language through my experiences on farms and things like that. And there was, there was no red flags. And out of nowhere, one of them just snapped and got Baloo on her back real quick and had her jaws around Baloo's neck. And so I was standing right there and instantly ran as fast as I could straight up to her. And that's the kind of thing where you don't even think about it. It's just adrenaline instant reaction. And threw all my body weight into the dog and, and nailed my knees into its, its back hind legs, pretty much into its butt. And that surprised the dog a lot. And so it yelped and I, you know, threw it to the side and then Baloo got up and Baloo tried to go after the dog. So I had to keep them separated. And then my buddy picked up Cowboy and said, heads up, Dan. And I looked up and there were four dogs just surrounding me, all staring at me like they were just waiting to determine what the next move was. And for a second, I thought it was about to be a battle royale, but fortunately they stood down and their companion limped off. And I felt really bad because I definitely hurt that dog, but saw it the next couple of days and it was limping, but didn't break any bones or anything like that. So that was a big adrenaline rush and certainly a fun story to relive, but glad to protect Baloo. And after that, we had this bond where she knew I was alpha and she, there was this instant unspoken respect where it's like, I, it's hard to describe, but she knew I had her back and that was a fun moment. So that's it. USMJ video tomorrow. Although I guess this video is going to be at the end of the USMJ video too. So now we're getting all inception like. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.